Good evening and welcome to Chatbox with Sam. Tonight's guest is Jeff Rector. Jeff is an actor, producer and writer. Welcome to Chatbox with Sam, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing great, Sam. Thanks for having me on. Really excited. Oh, I was excited for you to be here too. I know you've had a very busy schedule and I met Jeff at a Comic Con in Los Angeles this year. And, um, yeah. and he's a king of the Comic Cons. Would you like to share I'm a little bit? I'm still at Comic Con, as you can <laughs> see in the background. They'll never let me leave. That's right. As I just said, you're the king of the Comic Cons. Would you like to share a little bit about that since it's very close to both of our interests? Yeah, I just got back last night. It was I took the train down from Los Angeles along the coast, uh, uh, along the ocean. It's just a beautiful, beautiful ride on the train. I uh, was signing autographs Friday and Saturday, of course, for Star Trek The Next Generation, American Horror Story, some of my other genre TV work. And uh, and then Friday night, we went to the uh, Tim Burton Bash party, oh. which was really great. That was like four or 500 people. It was a huge three-story venue that went all the way up to the rooftop. That was a lot of fun. A lot of Tim Burton characters running around. A lot of Beetlejuices, really? and the Penguin, and some other Batman uh, villains and villainesses. It was uh, it was a great themed party. They actually yes. had some Pee Wee Herman's bicycle and his suit from uh, Pee Wee's Big Top, and a lot of actual props from some of his movies. It was really, uh, really a lot of fun. Most oh. everybody was in costume, so it was great. I think that's one of the most amazing things, uh, the costumes at the Comic Cons, because I do the media coverage for Pensacola. Uh, are you ever going to be at Pensacola? Any, I hope year? so. Yes, okay. I know the I guy. So. Great, great three days in Pensacola, way back when. Did you? <laughs> Sun and Jaws too. so Universal actually flew me down to Pensacola to read for the director. It was between me and two other guys, and... Uh, I didn't get it, unfortunately, but I got a taste of, uh, you know, stardom right off the bat, and that, that kept me positive. And, you did? Yeah. And here you are on Chatbox with Sam. <laughs> yeah, I'm not famous like you. It works, folks. It does. It works. Comic Cons work. All, all the way to Chatbox. <laughs> I just interviewed Dee Wallace, actually. Was oh, she, she's fantastic. She, isn't she's she beautiful? He's been yes. a presenter at the Burbank Film Festival, which you know, I'm the artistic director for. Yes, That's you are. actually a great segue. That's coming up in September, the 8th through the 11th. We're screening at the Burbank AMC 16 Theaters, which is the number one AMC in the nation, I found out. So is, that's very exciting. Is that private tickets only or is it open to some of the public? Oh no, tickets are going to be on sale next week, so... And where can people know. buy them? Burbankfilmfest.org awesome. You can go onto our website and all the information will be there and tickets and, and on the schedule of all the films. In fact, I'm excited because uh, I created the Night of Science Fiction, Fantasy and Horror many years ago. And um, Saturday we're actually screening the world premiere of the Red Tide Massacre horror film which uh, I co-star in and was directed by John A. Russo, who's one of the co-creators of the original Night of the Living Dead. So that's almost sold out now. We've got a big after party and the Ghostbusters are gonna be there. Awesome. Uh, got lots of monsters looking around, lurking and not looking around, probably looking around too, lurking. <laughs> lurking and looking that's around. That's the same, yes. Lurking and looking, that's um, that's amazing. So, um, fun. so yes, yeah, so we need to look, uh, you've got a website that we can go on to so people can look up, and especially your IMDB too, but that's not always updated in a timely fashion, but, you know. Uh, it's you, pretty, they're pretty good about it, yeah. All is my, it? In fact, uh, some future jobs are even up there now, so. You're going to be filming a, a Christmas movie soon. I'm waiting for the shooting schedule in the next week or two. It's called Holiday Twist. Mm -hmm. It's uh, written, directed, and produced by uh, Stephanie Garvin, who's actually on the uh, Burbank Film Fest board. I brought her on uh, last year. Uh, it's really great. It's a terrific family-friendly film. Uh, I can't say too much about the story, but... Um, it looks like Lionsgate is very interested in it and, and may release it. That's 
that's how uh, much uh, they're liking the footage so far. Right. So we shot for for a couple of weeks already, but then uh, there was we had a COVID issue, and mm. so we're going back into production, and uh, it's very exciting. Right. Uh, Kelly Stables stars in it. She's from Superstore. Uh, ah. Neil McDonough, who's done a million things, uh, right. including uh, he's in the Marvel Universe now, and um, uh, it's an all-star cast, so it's uh, That's perfect. John Aston, I'll be in some scenes with him, so uh, it's good. I was very excited when Jeff told me he played one of the Cray Brothers. The Cray Brothers was two twins in London, and there was another film made in the 80s with uh, two lead singers from the um, from a band, Spando Ballet, uh, the Kent Brothers. And Tom Hardy then then played both brothers in the most recent movie and did an amazing job. Wow, it's I didn't realize it was so big over here. So would you like to share with the audience a little bit of you playing with your twin brother, um, the Cray Brothers, and how that felt with a London accent? Because he sure. can't do a well, London accent. <laughs> Well, we killed a few people. Right. And, you know, we had to do the East, the, the East End Cockney London. accent for that for that particular show, and uh, uh, it's always fun and, and and thrilling for me to play real life characters. Just... I've probably played six or seven now. I played right. JFK in a film i played a killer on an episode of america's most wanted and that actually led to his capture <gasps> that's um, amazing i'm very very excited that's probably the one role that means the most to me because it was socially conscious and actually led to the capture of a killer um but it's always more exciting to play somebody that's real rather than just a made-up character, right? Where you can make any choices you want. I yeah. read read several books by the Cray Brothers. They were very nasty guys. Yeah. And basically, they murdered and tortured and mm -hmm. ran the East End of of London uh, for many years. They patterned themselves after um, um, American mobsters. They wore mm -hmm. the, the long coats and the ties and the fedoras. <clears throat> and they were eventually brought down by Scotland Yard. Yeah. Uh, after many, many years, they couldn't get him on anything. And uh, and they finally they finally got him. Did you know they tried to head up to Birmingham, my hometown in England, once? And there was a I people there that, that, yeah, not many people know that. But there's, um, we have a jewelry quarter up in Birmingham. They're run by the Futurals. Thing is, the Futurals are very powerful men too back then, but they didn't go around killing people. But they were very powerful. There's so, a difference between power and murdering. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, psychopathic and not psychopathic. But right. they tried to take over. They came up to Birmingham, I heard. This is the story. And uh, they got kicked back down to London again. <laughs> so <laughs> they didn't mess with the Birmingham boys. They wouldn't tolerate it. <laughs> They don't mess with the Peaky Blinders. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so. Good for them. I know. So, yeah, that's uh, who. Uh, and Johnny Depp was involved. And Johnny Depp played, uh, did the narration for it. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because when I finally saw it, I won a bunch of awards. I said, wow, that's a really interesting voice. I wonder who the narrator is. And I looked at the ending credits and it was Johnny Depp. And I found out later that he kind of had followed the career of the Crays and was kind of interested in, in them. Um, and uh, he called up the production company and said, hey, do you have someone to do the narration? And they said, sure. Yes. I love Johnny Depp. I think they he's awesome. Johnny Depp. Yeah, I love Johnny. I like him had too. a rough bit of it lately. Well, I'm glad he... he he came out and he, I feel that some people are criticizing him for going to court, but he had no choice. He was left in a corner and he uh, had gotta, to speak his truth. You've got to try and protect your good name. Yes, you know? and I'm glad he did. And, and lots of people came out in support of him too. So, you know, I don't like cruel words said about anybody to Amber or him, but um, I'm glad justice was done and, um, and I hope they can both move on and 
with you know and carry well, you've on. You've got to, no matter Except what these Disney. things go, you gotta you gotta just move on and absolutely and keep moving through life. You can't dwell on, on no. that stuff. I don't think he will. He's a very good character. And no. Jeff, you were born in St. Louis in Missouri and grew up in Michigan. And you went to Tarzana School. Uh, I grew up in uh, was born in St. Louis, but I grew up in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, which was a great place for a kid. In the Midwest, we water skied and swam on the lake in the summer, and when it froze, we played hockey and uh, skied in the winter and rode snowmobiles and motorcycles and played tennis and golf. I mean, it was a great, just a great place for a kid to grow up. And then uh, my father was a art director in advertising. He got offered a big job in a big uh, ad agency in L.A., so he moved out here to Tarzana and finished high school there. And what's interesting about Tarzana is um, that's where Edgar Rice Burroughs had a big ranch. And so they, you know, tar he created Tarzan. So they named the city Tarzana after uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs. How interesting. Yeah. And I know you wanted to give a big thank you as well to your mother, Joan, and your father, Harlan. So that was yes. really nice that I read that. I thought that was very heartwarming. Big shout out to my dad. I lost my mother uh, three months ago. I'm sorry. Well, Alzheimer's, shout out to you, Mom. I love Aww. you. I'm She's sorry. looking down on me now. Of course. I'm Smiling. very sorry about your mum. I'm sorry. Yeah, she was 88. She lived a great life. And uh, as, as any of us could, we'll be lucky enough to, uh, to do I'm so glad I brought up your parents now. So, God blessings for your mother, and I hope your father's doing okay. He's doing great. I've actually, that's a great segue into the next piece. My father and I have a couple of Christian projects together a musical feature film, but uh, um, a project that I'm, I'm excited about. I've taken over for this uh, TV series called Light. Living in God's Hands Today. It's sort of a Christian Twilight Zone. Nice. Series, anthology series. And I've got Kevin Sorbo to host it for me. Um, from uh, a series Andromeda and Hercules, of course. Yes. He's, a, he's a big Christian uh, director and producer and writer. And so very excited about that. We're taking some meetings. And uh, I think uh, that looks uh, looks pretty good. You're getting you heard your it here first on Chatbox. <laughs> Chatbox, we saw. First ever. <laughs> and are you casting now? Can people, um, are you going to be? Doing... Uh, well, we will be, yeah. When we go into production and we get uh, our, our eight episode schedule. Yes. Oh. Co writing it and, um, and executive producing. So that's awesome. It's a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, I know. Big it's deal. a big deal. Big deal. It was a radio drama my father created many years ago. It won a bunch of awards for Christian Broadcasting. We turned it into a C, uh, 10 CD set of 40 episodes. Mm. Those are now in um, all the prisons in uh, two states and half of Texas. Yeah. as a ministry for the prisoners. That's good. Oh, yeah. that gives him some peace a little bit. And now it's on, it's a, we, then we created it as a podcast, so you can look up uh, Light, L-I-G-H-T podcast, and you can listen to any of the inspirational true stories online, and then, of course, the next stage is making it a, a live narrative uh, TV series. You were in several theatre productions when you were first going into the industry and you learned how to write, direct and produce and edit. Um, and then you won an award, a speech background for the Toastmasters International. Would you like to share a little bit about that? Yeah, I, uh, I was a state national speech champion in college, Moore Park College, way back when. Mm -hmm. And um, because I was an actor, I didn't have any stage fright, which is why a lot of people take these these speech courses or, or uh, uh, Toastmasters is a public speaking organization mm -hmm. that helps people become better public speakers. Right. So lawyers, judges, corporate executives 
anybody that you know needs to make better presentations and be have better communication with the employees or be a better speaker for right. TED talks or whatever. It's mm -hmm. it's great for for anybody. Um, Me included. <laughs> you, no, you know. You're perfect. <laughs> just the way you are. Thank you. I'm taking Google Toastmasters International and there are literally tens of thousands of clubs around the world. In fact, every city probably has one or two. So it's real easy for people to look up, find a club in their own area. Yes. It's free to go and audit and just and, and go to a meeting and, and see how you like it. And you can go to different meetings, different clubs to you sort of find a home. It's only about 60 or $70 a year to become a member. And it's just uh, absolutely incredible. And then what I was already a, a you know an excellent speaker, but the difference was in college I had my professors that wrote these great speeches for me, and all I had to do was you know do them. But in Toastmasters, you learn to craft and write your own speeches. So it's not only the presentation, but it's the crafting, writing, and preparation of your own individual speeches, which is so empowering. And in um, 2017, I was the District 52 champion for table topics, oh, which wow. is sort of an impromptu speech. You have, you're given a topic and then you have two minutes to make up a speech on the spot. So that's a long time, really, when you think about it. It's a lot, two minutes is, it is a, a long time. time. People don't think it's it is, but it when, is. <laughs> when, you know, when you don't know what you're going to say, yeah. you just got to jump in and. I was very blessed to win that. And then uh, last year, there was a, a speech called The Tall Tales, which is what it sounds like. It's a tall tale, tale. it's outlandish story. I mean, you, you can make up whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And I made up this fun, funny and entertaining speech about time travel and meeting Lincoln. Well, what's funny is, <laughs> Abe starts to read me his speech and I go, whoa, whoa, Abe, time out. That's a little stiff. <laughs> How about this? Four score and seven years ago, our forefathers set forth on this continent, a new nation conceived in liberty. Lincoln says, whoa, that's pretty good, Jeff. That's very good. So it sounds like <laughs> I actually am the one that got him to <laughs> so it's kind of crazy and fun and um, I'm actually going to be doing that speech for a local club they asked right. me to come as a guest speaker on Wednesday so I'll have to dust it off and right. get it ready but uh, it's just a great organization and I would encourage anybody to check it out if it's not for you that's great but I think everybody including myself even with my background there's something to learn and grow mm -hmm. as, as speakers and, and human beings. You've been in quite a few movies. I've saw you with Linda Hamilton. Um, I did. Bermuda Tentacles was yes. fun movie for Sci-Fi Channel. Linda Hamilton from the Terminator films. Right. Ben Savage from Deer Hunter. Mm -hmm. um, it was a big... Uh, they spent a lot of money. It looked so good. They spent a lot more money for special effects. And uh, it, to this day, it's, um, it was uh, one of sci-fi's uh, uh, favorite, best, best viewed films. And then you were in The Admired that won an award. It won a bunch of awards, yes. actually. Yes. Um, my friend uh, uh, Jacqueline wrote, directed, and produced it first time writer director and producer wow. and it had a time travel element where she goes back into the 1940s and so i played this studio head kind of like uh, jack warner and i had a little pencil mustache and um so it was it's fun to play in those period pieces too where you get to play someone in it from a different time and it did very well and won a ton of awards and she got a uh notification from the Milan Film Festival in Italy. Oh, wow. Letting her know that she was going to win an award. They wouldn't tell her which award it was, but they had hoped she could come because she would be uh, winning an award. And 
so she wasn't able to go because she'd already traveled around so much and mm -hmm. uh, with her husband and uh, she wasn't able to make it so she asked me to represent the film and oh. I never been to Italy so I went to Rome I went to Florence and then I wound up in Milan and accepted the award I can't Oh, I went wonderful. all the way to Milan to get the award to bring back my suitcase to give it to her. Oh, but what a wonderful experience! But what a great experience! Yes. Oh yeah, it was it was it was really amazing. I mean, that's an award right there, doing all that, and then accepting an award mm -hmm. for a film that you've played in. Because as people don't, as I said before, people don't realise the hard work that goes into the industry. There's so much right. hard work behind the scenes, and I was also you played. Um, in, which I thought was amazing, the feud between Joan Crawford <laughs> and Betty Davis. Which yeah, made by Ryan Jessica. Murphy. Yes. What a, what a genius. He's been very good to me. Mm -hmm. uh, that actually, what's interesting about that is Jessica Lange played Joan Crawford mm -hmm. and um, Susan. Susan Sarandon played Betty Davis. Mm -hmm. And they both as you know, were the top of their game as yes. actors. My scene was with um, Susan Sarandon. Mm -hmm. I got to work with her, which was great. But they were they were you know two top women at their uh, at the peak of their careers, and in the series, and and they both were nominated for Emmy awards, as you can imagine. Right. So they were up against each other. But what's interesting in the actual feud between the two, Betty Davis and Joan Crawford were up against each other for the Academy Awards. Yes. And so that was part of the, the, the big end of the feud was here they're now competing against each other for the Oscar. Right. And, um, and it's so kind of life ironic. imitates art because then the two actresses were up against each other for the Emmy Awards. So... Um, you got to see it. It's a it's a great series about yes. old Hollywood, and there's a lot of cameos by famous actors of the time, and uh, just Ryan Murphy just did a brilliant job uh, uh, with where that. Where can we watch that, Jeff? Uh, probably on FX. Okay. And yes. I think FX is on Hulu now, so okay. uh, you can probably catch it there. It's just. Uh, Stanley Tucci plays Jack Warner in that, and it's just an all-star cast. And if you love old Hollywood, and yeah. and you get a real history lesson, and and it's all it's all true. Of course, it was based upon the movie they were making, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, oh. and uh, it's just enthralling. And then that led me to then Ryan cast me in uh, American Horror Story. Right, it brought That's me a big in one. on some of his other shows. So. He's been very good to me, and, and he's very good to his people. Uh, if he likes you, he, he keeps using you over and over again. So he's kind of got his stable of, of people, but he's, he's yeah. very loyal and, and just, uh, just a brilliant guy. Oh, that's amazing. I, so I big... keep scratching my shoulder. I... That's okay. Maybe you got an itch. I got but an you itch. You just can't scratch. Got an itch. <laughs> got an got itch. You just can't it. scratch it. Scratch my itch. <laughs> Now I can't get rid of the Cockney. <laughs> I know. I can't get rid of this British either. I can't do an American accent. I've tried. I can do a little bit of French. Oui, oui. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but not that. And you're in Scorpions and Never Look Back. You're in so much if people go to your IMDb. Uh, but, I've been very blessed. It's uh, over 150 TV shows. Yes, 150. And, and still going. I mean, I... I, I stuff comes up and oh i saw you in that you almost forget about it you know you've done so much stuff over the years but uh I'm just really blessed i played the good guys i played the bad guys and everything in between and yeah i know you played a lot of soldiers and and i saw you picture but now i'm writing did. directing and producing my own stuff so that's Perfect. that's really exciting my first short fatal kiss i sold hbo which mm -hmm. was unheard of at the time it's still one of the first short films Right. ever acquired by HBO in their 45 year history and then because of the success it was a short film we turned that into revamped which was yes. a feature film and you can see that on it's still on Tubi mm -hmm. and uh and some other streaming services so that's a dark vampire comedy that I think you'll get a kick out of oh yes I love vampire people don't recognize the shorts as much you know as the big film but they should right. because they so much work goes into them too everything you know it's just a shorter film 
But um, I think I, people should take more notice of short films because the the work that goes into them, and sometimes they're really good. You know, they're really well. The good. short the short directors become the next Spielbergs and right. And, and everybody else, you know, you got to start somewhere. And I would encourage filmmakers to start with the short. Don't put your, put all your money into a feature right off right. the bat. Because we all make mistakes and we continue to. And, um, you know, start small and, and, and work your way up. That's good advice, Jeff. Very good advice. If you were going to inspire the younger generation, what would be your main focus? Well, my favorite saying is you can be and do anything you want in this world. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. Everyone told me, no, 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 you're not going to be this. You're not going to do that. Everyone will try to knock you down and, and uh, you know, out of jealousy or spite or, or lack of confidence, whatever it is. And if you buy into it, you're finished. You know, you've got you've to stay strong. You've got to stay positive. You go, I am talented. This is what I want, and this is what you got to do. It's like Nike; they say just do it. I mean, it can't, it, it's it's never an easier time for people to make movies right now. You can shoot it on your iPhone. You can edit it on your iPhone or your computer. I mean, back in the day, we had to use real film, and you had to get it developed, and it was a whole process. Now you can, you know, yeah, you know, kids, little kids are are, are already in production and they are. You know, doing videos and stuff. But TikTok. TikTok, yeah. Mm. But uh, that's not a movie. No. No, but it, the, that's we do a have silly to... 15 seconds. <laughs> but they've got the technology to do it. And so take that technology, take some classes, read some books. Uh, there's a great one by uh, Brian Michael Stoller called Filmmaking for Dummies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the uh, we did. In fact, if you go to Burbank Film Festival, burbankfilmfest.org, you can see an hour long uh, uh, panel we did with Brian. Oh, wow. Talking about his book and where he came from. And for, I think, 10 or 15 bucks, it's a whole education of 30 years of, of his life of trial and error, right? Wow. So, you know, get that, spend the $15 and mm -hmm. get an education. Absolutely. Especially people that want to. Just do it. Go out and do it. Stop talking about it. In Hollywood, everyone, I've got a script. I'm a director. I got blah, blah, blah. I'm not a talker. I just do it. That's perfect. And, and that's what, uh, don't talk about it. Just get out there and do it. And then when it's done, then shout it to the highest mark. <laughs> So get it done first because then everybody's going to hey what happened to that movie well you know it never happened <laughs> yeah talk about it just do it yeah talk about it when it's um, and talk about it after it's been funded and filmed and everything right and out there is there any role that you've taken where you saw your own personality within that role And you can't say the Cray Brothers. <laughs> well, when I played the Cray Brothers, I, <laughs> I killed some people. Um, but that's you know a tough I mean, one. Yeah. You know, there's a little bit of me in everything because mm -hmm. it's me. Yeah. But, um, you know, I play a lot of cops. That's my bread and butter. I'm very clean cut. Play a lot of FBI, sheriff, police officers which I have the utmost respect for, mm. first responders. Um, Absolutely. But like I said, I played the, the one that I'm most proud of is the America's Most Wanted, where I, my performance actually led to the capture Catch of a you. criminal. Um, That's amazing, though, that is. I doubled Jean-Claude Van Damme on Double Impact. I got to go to Hong Kong for three months wow. on that movie. So that was my best wildest adventure mm -hmm. to date and made some pretty good money on that and you know got to spend three months in a foreign country which was pretty cool yeah it's good to travel so that was a that was a real landmark um playing like i said i played jfk john f kennedy that was a thrill to play an iconic historical figure mm -hmm. like that um 
and a lot you of know, sci-fi. Somebody says I've been bad guys. You know, I, I'm uh, the bad guys are the most fun to play because it's not me, and it's mm-hmm. more fun to play somebody else. Right. I say that has the least bit of of me in there, mm-hmm. and you can do some wild and crazy choices because it's not you, right? Right. It's a completely different person character you're creating so that's the most fun but um i try to get lost in all my characters that's good because you're absorbed by them makes it it try to make everything a little a little different otherwise it's it's just the same thing right yeah that's perfect And and i also teach i teach privately um i talk to the university of utah through their night uh adult education program Mm -hmm. i actually got some of the uh, younger students that were really good agents so they're working actors now so i've started other actors on the road to uh to a career in the industry i found i really liked that i really enjoyed giving back to to a new generation of actors and i was was gonna say my son needs a teacher he's 15 he's very good looking very deep voice he's my youngest that's a that's a great age to to get started and if he's mm-hmm. got the looks that's that's a big plus right oh, yeah. right out of the starting gate but yeah he's gonna be we'll tall. talk if i can if i can help him out i'd be be happy to thank you so much yes i'd love to do that so he's got obviously he's got i said i'm not doing anything until he's had lessons because there's no point until right. he's had some lessons yeah well but i you know parents parents say Hey, my son says he wants daughter. Son wants to be an actor. You know, I don't know. Can you? So I spend a couple hours of them. I find out real quick, right, where but they're at, and and some are natural and some aren't. You know, and mm-hmm. I'm honest with them, and I'll say, listen, they need some work. Not that they can't ever be good, but but they're going to need some work. And some, they're just naturals. You go, they've got what it takes. So. Right just you just never know but i'm always honest because it doesn't you know there's 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 too much bs in hollywood already and anybody really wants oh i want to be a star and i want to be on tv and i want to they have no idea how much commitment and uh work it takes and and you know they think they 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 can just it's going to happen overnight and it doesn't uh, you know it's a lifelong career and you got to be in for the long haul well, yeah, I always, I asked him why, and he said, I want to make people feel how I felt when I was watching the movies, like the Marvels. That's a great start. That's, yeah. I do stand-up comedy, too. You do know? you? And a, lot of, and a lot of my films are very, have very dark comedy to them. So I love making people laugh. I love, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be in a theater and watch the reaction of, people watching one of my films some actors can't literally can't watch themselves on, on the screen. screen and i don't get it i'm like huh what a... johnny dips one of them we all have egos they go wow what are you as an actor you don't like to see yourself what um but i get a thrill i get a thrill out that's of it that's good i like evoking emotions i think most actors do whether it's sadness sorrow happiness whatever yeah. And uh, oh. if, you, if you don't enjoy that, I don't know why you'd want to be an actor. Right. Oh, I bore my eyes out if it's a sad movie. Yeah. I, I get very absorbed and I'm like, but why did he do that? And then me and my mom are crying and then start laughing. That's when I was living in England, obviously. That was why. Oh, you ago, saw but... the Jeff Rector story. I haven't saw that yet, but You're I will. Buying, I promise. Pulling your eyes out. No, that was. <laughs> I know you did the Jeff Rector. You've done quite a few shorts. I did my one-man show called "Who Is Jeff Rector." But you did. I was going to bring and, that up. And that was that was I I I, I swore I was going to do it. And you did and it. COVID and COVID happened, and everybody's sitting around not knowing what to do. And I go, you know what? Now's the time to do it. And um, and we uh, we we did it in a in a theater without an audience. But we streamed it live worldwide, and we taped it. So uh, I've got it for posterity, and um, I'm gonna. Now that I've got some time, I'm gonna put it back up so some more people can see it. Yes. And Where can they find uh, that? It's uh, it's not up yet. 
Okay. Uh, I, we streamed it for a little while when it first came out, but I'm going to get it back up onto a streaming s site and I'll let you know. But okay, uh, it'll probably be up on my website, jeffrector.com. But if you want to see any of my acting reels or what I'm up to, I also have a book out in 2019 because I was a play called I was a Playboy Rabbit. Yeah. I worked for uh, Playboy Enterprises in the 80s. I was a rabbit. I was the male version of the Playboy Bunny. Really? At the New York Empire Club. So I worked for Playboy Enterprises and Hugh Hefner. And, you know, we were glorified waiters, but hmm. you're going to wait. Why not work at the Playboy Club? Right. So we were celebrities in town. It was great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got good we could tips. get into any club when we were working, we could get into any club in the city and we were in Playboy and People Magazine. And then when I moved back out to California, I, uh, you know, got invited up to the Playboy Mansion parties and, and got to know Hugh Hefner. And it was just, a, you know, a, a dream come true. And those guys good. dream of, of that. And, and I was able to enjoy that for <laughs> about 10 or 15 years. Oh, wow. So I heard that the girls were very safe there, though. You know, it, you know oh, yeah. Oh, every, yeah. Everything was above board, you know. Oh, yeah. You took care of people. L listen, anybody. Yeah. Can, I'll tell you, the great thing about the Playboy, Playboy Mansion was everybody was equal. Mm. You know, ben, I met Ben Affleck and Jack Black and Bill Maher and all these guys. And they're all super nice because right. everybody's super nice, right? You're yeah. at the, the best party on earth. <laughs> and and the bad apples are gone and they yeah. don't come back. You know, they they don't, uh, Hugh doesn't tolerate any inappropriate behavior toward toward the, the, the women, girl. toward anybody. Yeah. And yeah. so um, you're, you're treated just like any other celebrity because in, you've got to be somebody to be there. So yeah. it was just this real cool vibe of everybody's equal and we're just there to have a drink and dance and and the food was fantastic and, and just have some fun. I made a lot of uh, long-term friends. That's that good. Time. Yeah, my friend actually went there. I, um, I went, but he told me that it was all above board. So. Um, but get the book. I was a Playboy Rabbit and Other Adventures. It's on Amazon. It's an Amazon bestseller. So it talks about working for the, the Playboy uh, Club. I was Charlie Sheen's stand-in on Wall Street. So there's a whole chapter on working with Charlie. I was Tom Cruise's stand-in on Cocktail at the time. So there's a whole section on that. So it's really a pretty fun read. It's the five years uh, in the 80s that I, that I lived in New York. So. And 80s so was wild, the best. Those were wild roller coasters. <laughs> For 1999, that's the one. <laughs> I know, but wasn't it good? You had such a great time. I mean, I oh, don't blame you writing it down and sharing what it. A, what a life a I've Good had. read. I, I've been so fortunate. Oh, God bless you. That's great. Uh, of all the charities in the world, which one would you choose to advocate for and why? That's a tough one because I, I, I support so many so many charities out there and I play in a lot of celebrity events and golf tournaments. The Hart Foundation, Ronald McDonald House. Um, Boys and Girls Club, Leukemia, I was impressed. Boys and Girls Club, Leukemia, mm. Leukemia Foundation. Um, I'm Christian, so, you know, um, I tithe to my church, so that's kind of... You 10%? That's my number one charity giving back to to the mm -hmm. Lord that's mm -hmm. provided everything for me, but um, probably something for the kids, one of the, the, the children's charities. Right. Oh, because be there are, because the children are our future. They are definitely, absolutely 100%. And, and they, and when they go through illnesses, they, they're so, you know, they, they don't complain and they just like, Loma Linda Children's Hospital and St. Jude's, you know, they all need help with the funding. So I'm glad you said children and. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. And because 
I spent a lot of times in, in hospitals and, and, and doing the different charity things. And the older people that are kind of lived this life, you know, are desperate to hold on to what they have, what little they have left. And these kids who have their whole life ahead of them are just so upbeat and positive about it. You know, it's yeah. just like they've, they've, they've accepted it. And, and it's interesting how the kids with the most to lose are, uh, accept it more than, than some of the older but, people yeah. that don't really have much time left. Heartbreaking really. But, yeah. Yeah. I wish children enough to get ill. I think it should be for us old folks. <laughs> Just the bad people. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just, the bad. Just bad people get Murderism. sick. Murderism. Murderism. People that hurt kids and animals. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Jeff. So, is, um, and how has music influenced your life? That's a great question. I don't get that asked very much. Um, uh, growing up, I, I played the guitar, I learned to play the guitar. My twin brother, Jerry, played the drums. Our younger brother, Doug, played the keyboards. So we're like a little trio for a little while. And then my, my younger brother lost interest in the keyboards. I kind of lost interest in guitar but my brother kept playing the drums and was in a touring band for a little while but I just I always felt like music was you know was part of who I am a little part mm -hmm. so there's a part of me that I still have electric guitar that I rock out once in a while you know I can sing and play a couple of Eagles songs but I love um, I love doing karaoke and I love singing. And so I've got a little karaoke set up at home. Really? I know probably 20, 25 songs that there's a part of me that's a singer that I just need to, to get out once in a while. And and I, I honest, this sounds crazy, but I honestly believe that a little piece of Jim Morrison was reincarnate, reincarnated in me because I can, I'm the same pitch and I can do oh, all really? Jim Morrison songs I, I got that vibe and i just get this when i'm doing and i just get this i just close my eyes almost and just feel like it just comes out i don't mm. even have to to try it so there's a that's an amazing voice. part of me that i have to get out there's the stand-up comedian that i have to satisfy once in a while the director the writer so you remind me very a lot of different parts to me and i've got to feed them all a little bit at, at a time and it keeps life uh, exciting and interesting i love karaoke i go out nearly every thursday what's your what's your go-to karaoke song yeah i don't think i'm very good at it but i i have a good laugh i used to be good but my voice broke as long as you I enjoy to... it that's what that's why karaoke is so great it doesn't yeah, matter whether you're I good or to... bad it's just fun to get it out and have some fun have a couple of drinks and yeah and I, I did musicals when i was younger in the theater jo oh. uh, joe's finished technical dream coat with andrew lloyd webber i met him and so i was doing a lot of singing and playing the trumpet and the things when i was growing up but they my school shut the drama thing down so that cut that off but yeah i i like to play that and uh have you heard of dido dido the irish singer yeah i like to sing her and um and then one of my favorites that if I like is I was going to come up with a name for a band, it wouldn't be Dido. <laughs> I know, right? Dido, but <laughs> they were successful, so what are you going to do? <laughs> Dido is more successful than I am. So, <laughs> She's got an amazing working. voice. And Zombie by the Cranberries. I like to sing that. Sure. Cranberries are great. I, uh, I put my throat right into that one. <laughs> I just pretend I'm growling like a Rottweiler and I sound really good. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just kidding. You know, I so. started doing uh, stage plays, you know, when I was younger. And of course, in school, it's always, you know, you do the school musical every year. I did mm -hmm. Brigadoon, I did Kiss Me Kate. And there's just something about those musicals that really go right to your heart, you mm. know. I love it. That, that, that just give you this amazing feeling and 
So that's kind of what helped hook me in the very beginning was when I started doing high school musicals. Yeah. Well, I think with every, you know, Hans Zimmer, I, I listen to that a lot as well, Hans Zimmer's music. I listen He's to great all. composer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But without that music, I mean, it makes the movie, doesn't it? It makes the moment. And right. memories, it holds memories, each song holds a memory you know so it's very powerful so i think it's complementary to the industry and um and it's complementary to a room that's silent if you put a good music on it can bring a room together that's, that's absolutely yeah i think so so jeff Rector, really set a set a tone or a mood or a feeling absolutely depending on the style of music yes indeed so is there anything that no one has asked you in an interview that you would have liked them to ask you? What's my favorite color? No. <laughs> I'd say black. Black. I like to wear black. Black's a Hollywood color, you know, it's, it's upscale. Um, question. Not really. I, I've anything you can think of. I'm an open book at this point. You are. Most people I interview are, which is a great thing. So, if this was the last time you were ever going to talk to an audience, or what would you say? If it's the last time you could ever say anything, to, to, the last things that you could ever my, say. My final. <laughs> My final confession, mm -hmm. I've lived a great and amazing life. I've seen and done more than a hundred people twice my age. I've traveled the world. I've worked with incredible people. Um, I've been close to death in, in more times than I care to think about in a variety of accidents that the Lord basically saved me from. And every time that happens, you just appreciate life. And, uh, and every time I, I go to a friend's funeral, it makes me appreciate what I have. Aww. That I'm healthy, I'm not in a wheelchair, that I'm active, I'm still working. Um, if I were to go tomorrow, I would say I've lived a fantastic life I have no regrets. Uh, we all make mistakes in life and we all do things we, we wish we hadn't, but it's all part of growing and living and being human. And I am just incredibly blessed for what I have, the life that I've lived and God willing, uh, a long life in the future. Do what you love, love what you do, get out there and do it, stop talking about it, make your life happen for yourself. Don't listen to anybody, don't mm -hmm. listen to the naysayers, don't listen to any of the negativity, be who you are, be who you want to be, don't let anybody tell you to be somebody that you're not or you don't want to be and just create a life for yourself. I did, so I know you can too. And, uh, Aww. live long and prosper. Amen. God bless you all. Amen to that. What Woo! a beautiful speech. Amen. Whoa, you did Amen, that. sister. Woo! Amen, Jeff. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Amen, Jesus. But you know what? I do love the Lord, by the way. But so that that was great, absolutely fantastic. Because great question. I, you know what? It. I'm not going anywhere. What do you mean? This is my. I'm not going anywhere. And that and that's what it's about. My chat box with Sam, trying to find out we're familiar and uniquely different, and trying to promote kindness and acceptance right. of each other instead of judging each other and. Right. And I'm speaking from your heart, which you can't find on IMDb and you can't find on Google. No. 
And that's what the people yeah, that watch find my it channel. on a resume or a biography. Right. Only in your memoir, but when you say it with your... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only in my book. Have <laughs> you good good times with Jeff Rector? <laughs> good times, Charlie. <laughs> but you just spoke from your heart, and people will remember that. Because when you touch someone's soul, they remember it. When you make them laugh, they remember it. If you mm. make them cry, they remember it. But they're... Be, but you... be nice. Right. Be a good person. There's so many people in Hollywood and, and, and in the world that have everything and they're not nice people and they're not happy. Be that, nice to people and, and they'll be nice to you. That's probably why they're not nice because they're not happy. Money doesn't right. buy happiness. I think kindness no, but having money makes you happier than when you don't have the money. Oh gosh, yeah. I'd rather I'd rather have it a little bit more than broke Is as a it, joke. <laughs> money can buy you love, yeah, but it's better than if but you're it broke. Works. <laughs> you find more love than if you're broke. You it helps sport. me get on the plane to Los Angeles every yeah. every few yeah. weeks. Yeah. Burbank International Film Festival, September eighth through the eleventh at the uh, Burbank AMC sixteen theaters. Go to Burbank Film fest.org you can see all the programming all the tickets all the films red carpet events uh after parties and of course our big uh, awards gala oh some exciting news about that we uh, talked to tim burton who of course the famous director who lives in london we offered to fly him out and honor him this year he couldn't because of his schedule but he's allowed us to use his name and create the Burbank, the Tim Burton Burbank Native Hollywood Award to honor a filmmaker every year from the city of Burbank because uh, Tim Burton grew up in Burbank. So this is going to be the first year. We're very excited about that. And uh, we'll let you know who that is. That's on, awesome. Uh, September 11th. I'm going to be there. I'm going to fly should be in. there. Everybody should be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have great parties because we work all year to make this happen. And so that's the time to have some fun. Yeah. It's been an honor to be on Checkbox. Thank you. It's been an honor to speak with Jeff Rector, a man of many talents. And buy his book and watch his films and TV series. Thank you, Jeff. You saw, it here, you saw and you heard it here first. Absolutely. So Jeff is going to say good night to the audience. Good night, audience. <laughs> oh, the viewers. Thank you very much, Jeff Rector. God bless you all. Good luck and uh, have great lives.